All right, Spider-Man fans, John Campia, the person who leaked those two Spider-Man photos, finally responds with his explanation. Let's watch it. Toby and the light source is hitting the right side of his face. And I can't believe I'm about to say this. I never thought I would say this in my entire online career. But look closely at Toby Maguire's dick. Yeah, big change. Hello, Spider-Man fans. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. I felt absolutely compelled to make a part two video of what we were talking about with the leaked images that released online the other day. And I do want to say up front, I'm not going to be showing the images or heck even describing them. I think most people by now who care about them have seen them and you know what they are. So I think anyone who wants to be safe from spoilers will be okay to watch this video, especially since the second half of this video will be talking about all new official stuff that Tom Holland is talking about with the movie, some official images, and even official promotional material that has landed online showing us that they're ready to go ahead and throw everything they got for Spider-Man No Way Home. But I'm gonna need your guys' opinions down below with everything we discussed here today. What did you think of the response of the person who leaked these images? As well as leaving me all your thoughts and opinions on the official comments Tom Holland had to say about the movie. All right, so yes, one of the reasons I felt like it was only fair for me to make a part two about these leaked images that were released online, which hey, if you know nothing about those, I suggest checking out my first video where I explain in heavy detail where the photos came from and the reasoning at that time of why we knew movie YouTuber John Campia decided to release them. Well, in his live movie news show that he does every day, he finally went ahead and addressed the whole situation, putting it full forward on why he did what he did. I watched his entire explanation and from a certain point of view, I can understand how John Campion made this mistake. Some of y'all thought I was being extremely harsh on Campion wanting to end his career when like that's not even close. All I said is I was disappointed in him putting his watermark on someone else's Photoshop work. At least that's what he thought at the time. But I made it clear. I was a fan of this guy. I grew up watching him. I learned a lot from him. And even before this little Spider-Man controversy, I still tuned in to watch his show from time to time because like him or hate him with his strong opinions and rants, the man is very well knowledge in movie news stuff. And I I'd rather watch someone like him than all the other hundred YouTube channels that talk about being woke and cancel culture. But some of the interesting details he revealed in his explanation is he did say that the person who sent him these photos asked him not to reveal who his identity was. And that kind of made sense for me then why he felt it was okay to watermark it for himself because he technically got permission from the person who sent them to him. And then like we heard soon after posting those photos, he got a phone call from somebody in the industry saying they might be real and it's safer for him to take them down. He even goes on to discuss that he talks to a rep with Sony where he says exactly I was talking to one of my studio reps today I'll say studio that has a letter S in it and they basically said to me like I assume you thought these things were fake because you put your watermark on it I don't expect that you would try to steal the Mona Lisa and leave your business card behind for the cops to call you and I'm like yes if I had thought they were real and I was going to share them online I would absolutely not put my watermark on it so everybody knew the leak came from me. He even mentions that he was asked who sent him those photos and he felt like it wasn't right for him to reveal who sent him those photos in fear of getting that person in trouble, which I think should tell you all you need to know about the photos if Sony themselves are asking, hey, who was your source for those photos by the way? If they're fake, why do they care who the source is? But probably one of the most juicier parts of this story is he mentioned there were two other photos he was about to post before he got that phone call from someone in the industry telling him, hey, you might want to delete those. And he was this close to revealing them online. And look, I know we don't want stuff ruined for us, but y'all hearing that you're like, what? What's the photo, Campia? What's it gonna be? He didn't reveal what the photos were. He said that you would never be able to guess what they were, but he did hint that it was somebody in a motion capture suit. My mind immediately goes to, oh, is it Mysterio in his motion capture suit? And that'll be his big reveal back in No Way Home? Maybe finishing out the Sinister Six? But I feel like that's too obvious, and he mentioned that we would never guess it, so go with a wild guess, man. And even though he didn't reveal those photos, it does excite me, because it lets me know there are still a bunch of secrets with No Way Home that we have no idea about, that even though it feels like this movie movie's been ruined for us, I feel like there's so much hidden with this film that there's a lot of surprises left to be had, even if you're someone who's read and looked at all the spoilers out there. And lastly, he does mention if these leaks turn out to be real and Sony doesn't put them in a new trailer and hides it from all the marketing, but it ends up being in the movie, he is going to feel extremely bad for the situation, hates the fact that he ruined it for some of the fans, and does show a bit of remorse for his actions, and I honestly found them genuine. You're free to have your own opinion on the situation, but since I talked about it already without his 
his side of the story, I thought it was only fair to bring it up here. Moving on from that now and only talking about official stuff that has been released for Spider-Man No Way Home is we did get another damn photo of the bridge scene from Total Films. And this is what I mean, man. Sony is only marketing the hell out of the bridge sequence from Spider-Man No Way Home because I feel like everything else in the movie is just absolute spoilers. And while it is an ongoing joke and I think it's rather ridiculous that it's only frame by frame of this bridge scene, I do love it, okay? Don't forget, in Far From Home, all the marketing avoided showing us the Mysterio versus Spider-Man fights. And maybe I've mentioned this before on the channel, but I just remember watching Far From Home for the first time and none of the the marketing material involves Spider-Man versus Mysterio. So when I finally saw those illusion fights for the first time in theaters, I was like blown away. And I feel like that's what Sony's kind of wanting to do here. They're just going to show the hell out of the bridge sequence and then the fights that Tom Holland has with Electro, the Lizard, Sandman, Green Goblin, all of that will be amazing fights that'll be big surprises to us and we're like we expect a little tussle between Doc Ock and Spider-Man on a bridge now. Along with those official images, we are also seeing official promotional material being released online that people are capturing, like a couple of Pepsi cans. Now, I'm more of a Coca-Cola man myself, but I say yes whenever they say, no Coke, Pepsi? Okay. And you can see here the new interpretation of the Iron Spider suit with the red, black, and gold, as well as just the black and gold suit. Those look pretty nifty, and I'll probably pick up a can if I see them in my local store. The other random thing that appeared online as official promotional artwork is this debit card company, and they put little official logos of Spider-Man No Way Home all over them. I think it's just the beginning of the breadcrumb that now that Eternals has gotten out of the way and Spider-Man No Way Home is like the only Marvel movie left for the year, they're gonna go full crazy with the marketing and I kind of can't wait to see what else they show. Along with that, we did have some official comments from Tom Holland himself talking about the movie and what he said right here kind of gave me goosebumps. With talking with Total Film, he said, what people will be really surprised about is that it's not fun, this film. It's dark and it's sad. It's going to be really affecting. You're going to see characters that you love go through things that you would never wish for them to go through and I was just really excited to kind of lean into that side of Peter Parker. That is the weird dilemma that we have as Spider man fans okay one of the common complaints that tom holland spider-man gets is that the boy never deals with consequences everything is handed to him he's a little too happy we need to see him suffer the way toby and andrew did and now that tom holland himself is addressing those criticisms and saying that no in this movie he is gonna suffer and he's gonna be in so much pain and us spider-man fans are just like yes i want to see you suffer i think it's pretty crazy of us but that's what we've become. But I do think it's something that is sorely lacking in MCU Spider-Man. And I feel like this movie is really setting up that storyline to where everything that this Spider-Man has is going to get taken away from him and basically put him at a rock bottom point where the next trilogy with Tom Holland will be more in line with traditional Spider-Man stories of a guy who's struggling but also tries to keep up a good attitude to be a crime fighter. Time will only tell, but I do love those comments about the movie, along with this one that Tom Holland also had to say about his relationship with Doctor Strange in the movie. He said exactly, it's a very different relationship from Tony Stark and Peter Parker, Holland says. I wouldn't consider Doctor Strange as a mentor in this film. It's more as a colleague at this point in the films. Spider-Man has established himself as quite a powerful and serious Avenger. Doctor Strange sees that in him and treats him like an equal. Throughout the course of the film, their relationship breaks down and rather than becoming colleagues, they don't become enemies, but they're definitely not friends. That's kind of sad that Tom Holland says that, that they're not going to be friends in the movie because I kind of really like the banter between Doctor Strange and Peter Parker. I think it just works really well. You saw it in Infinity War and we get little bits of it in the No Way Home trailer, but we do see little glimpses that they're going to be fighting each other on top of a train in the mirror dimension. I would think by the end of No Way Home, they would end up being friends and just shaking hands like, oh man, that was a messed up day, but glad we're okay from the sounds of this. It looks like the movie might even end with Doctor Strange forgetting that he was ever friends with Spider-Man. That would be pretty wild. But that is just all the stuff we currently have right now to talk about with Spider-Man No Way Home. Like I said, I really just wanted to make this video to address the stuff from the previous one and really trying to segue myself to only start talking about official things that are released with this movie because like, it's a month away. I want to have as many surprises as I can for the film and as tempting it is to talk about leaked things that happen, I think this might be the best course of action until the movie's released. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.